So we, we switch things around a little bit. So we'll do uh, we'll do set first because it's a bit easier actually to look at. So we'll do uh, set first, and we'll do I'll give you a quick intro to Solidity for those that don't know yet. And um, we will deploy a Solidity contract into the set transaction family in your sort of network. Super straightforward. And then you know you can play around with that a little bit. And then yeah, so you know do some do some extensions, the solidity contract, look at it on the chain. And then we do a uh, we actually go and we build the transaction time. We switch it around because the transaction time stuff is actually a lot more complicated. Here it's with set the main problem is that it's not done yet. Uh, whereas with the transaction time, the problem is that it's very complex. So, um, Anil will explain to you Seth and how it works and what you can do So there is a integration for Ethereum or an Ethereum integration for hybrid subtut called SET. And we are going to run this network. There is also a simple network with this transaction processor with the transaction family of Ethereum. But, um, Which is the thing that you installed earlier that took a long time to set up. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, Did that work for everyone, by the way, quick show of hands. No. Who has the set? So you remember you did the first network and then you did another thing, which is the set where you had to change the Docker file. Who has, for well, who did that work? Who has it running now? Okay, you changed the Docker file for the uh, identification profile? No, so this, uh, this one was the, so if you go onto the material, you're under hyper, um, no, sorry, and the last one here, transaction families, set, if you choose set, you will yeah. see um, installation instructions. Okay. If you haven't done that yet, do it now. Yeah, I will. So that as I was talking, because it takes a lot of, it does a lot of stuff. It's amazing to watch. Um, <laughs> so who has this running? Two, three. Okay, not. Right. We, we, need, we need more people running this. <laughs> um, it's like it's running, but every so often it just dies. It's that it's not just like as long as it as long as it does like you know it gives you like ten minutes of playing time. Yeah, it's just like. <laughs> okay, so this is this is just coming with version one point zero. There is still uh, it's still very raw. So if you have a, if you were ever wondering how it used to be like to write smart contracts for a year in twenty early twenty fifteen, you're going to find out. Because the tooling is about as basic, you have to do like handed crypto and stuff, um, and it's it's not very smooth. But we were going to play around with it. So yeah, go through this set installation stuff while I know it's talking. So, any more questions? Sorry. <laughs> yes. Can you give us some sample uh, use case? Uh, using actually the virtual machine makes sense in, uh, mm -hmm. Well, I mean, it makes sense, for example, if you have some of the developers and you build stuff on Ethereum, and you know, I want to be able to use that one on one. Uh, there is a lot of tooling available to statistically test the smart contracts. There are a lot of best practices. So if you compare that to transaction families, so literally because it just has had more time and more people have built stuff for it, it has uh, more tooling and more verification, such as the verification and other testing tools available. Here, but uh, I mean, there's also uh, the uh, ATMs now uh, interconnected also with public network, and it's still not like 30% on the test. Yeah. Uh, it makes sense because I've developed for a few years. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
you, you will, we will talk about the differences. Um, you have to look at from the perspective of uh, developing the web application, which will use, I mean, it, it could be that you have already your UI, you have already your uh, RPC calls, and then you have your contract, and then you want to have it in a private blockchain. Then you have, of course, many options yet, right? You have uh, Fabric now, you have Subtweet you can use, you can uh, use Corda, uh, not Corda, Corum. So, I mean, I agree. Like, you, you can basically switch out, we'll go through that, but you can switch out um, the, the RPC that comes with set, you know, that the set exposes, um, and the Ethereum, like the, you know, the Jack so RPC. So, you can change it, connect with uh, J, uh Yeah. That, that's the, I, that's the, yes, that's the idea in long term, I will say, because, <laughs> yeah, because at the moment, I mean, uh, at the moment, it doesn't work very well. Um, I think there's um, big improvements for version 1.1, which um, is just released last week or something like that. They're going to use, the, I think, version 1.0, which uh, has some problems with yeah, with calling, with calling, but calling also, yeah, the web tree. I think you know, Solidity wasn't necessarily the most amazing language for smart contract development in the first place, but it has gone through a lot of iterations. And compared to chain code, I would say it is easier to audit because it is easier to validate. It's more readable. But that's maybe a personal thing. Maybe you're almost taking a compared to uh, Golan or Java. Yeah. I don't know. It, but ultimately, it is really just it, it is. Well, from what I understand, it is to open up all of the things that have been built for Ethereum and make them executable in this environment. And it's also to show the power of transaction funding because you know you can. No, it's it's not really a decision towards uh, uh, sort of. It's just I don't I don't see the the glue going because it's also the, it's the same problem. It's it's still one of it. Before what you get is some JavaScript lab with a parity. Write from a, you know, from a multi device with them. I think we can write from public. It's just software. Sure. I mean, we, we don't necessarily need solid contracts uh, anywhere, but again, like a lot, there have been a lot of best practices, and we've made a lot of mistakes in solidity, and we've lost a lot of people a lot of money. Um, not we just, not we specifically. <laughs> <laughs> we. As developers, uh, or you know, um, as solution providers. So I would say there is a value. Like people have a lot of experience writing solutions to smart contracts, and so you know, if, I think there is definitely space there. It's also it's a fun exercise. So for today, let's treat it as a fun exercise of the bit of solidity, and it's not a also no, no, I know it's not a criticism, but uh, it's a good question, and you know, who knows if we need it? We're gonna teach you that. <laughs> yeah. Um, right. Set. Yeah, it is. So set is um, transaction family, <laughs> like other transaction families we saw before. To start set, um, we can just try to follow the set documentation. Um, yeah, let's see. It, we can see the different components. It has a client, a set client, a uh, set transaction processor, and a RPC server. So usually we have already a Sautut API, which we could also use instead, of a, but that is more difficult because in this case you would need to know the structure of all the messages. So the set RPC is like the JSON RPC from, from Ethereum. I think you're going to talk about what it actually is. Okay, so it has different components. One is an RPC server, one is transaction processor. You saw already transaction processor. And, well, if you follow this, um, it will not work. There's a small repo change. Um, that's why you need to use this, this Docker file replace this docker file in your um, in the repository you clone then you can you can start it so I'm going to start just with docker compose up
Okay. Same with this. Wait, 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 What do we have? Um, we have Southwood world data, like last time, and we have REST API, Southwood REST API. So there is a um, Southwood network running. And in addition, we have transaction processor for SET and RPC. And in, and in addition to that, we have also a block info transaction processor that shall, that, that shall help for uh, getting information about the blockchain, and we have settings transaction processor. So uh, you saw the setting transaction processor already. So what we are going to do is we just want to start or jump into the container for the client, for set client. So, and here we have You see, we have a set client, and also something we, we are going to need is solves, which we will need to compile the smart contracts written in Solidity. So I'm going to just um, I'm going to just do all the steps. You can also see in the in the content. The first thing we need is creating some keys. It's always the same keys and users. So, yep, doesn't work. So let's see why. Perhaps I just test it. Just fabric stuff. So, actually, should work. Okay. So we have here a key, which is. Encrypted. So let's import this key. This means just uh, creating for uh, it's. Where is it? Yeah, it's all. Yeah. Okay. That's why. Now it's perfect, right? <laughs> so I like that. I like that then. Okay. You mostly do online courses. So. <laughs> <laughs> so let's do this. So you're importing the key with uh, the with my name. Yes. As um, as the identifier for the key. 
Yeah, because the documentation says to to do it like that, right? Yeah, yeah. So. yeah. No, no, I'm just I'm <laughs> just repeating um, so that it's clear what you're doing. Yes. Thanks. And mm-hmm. then we can then we can create with this key which we imported, we can create an account. So this is the very first step to have a of have an it account. Only works if you use mining. <laughs> yes. So just try it. Uh, if the network is running for you. It looks like the network is not running for anyone. <laughs> so, uh, have, do we have more people? So, who is it not running for? Yeah, who is not running? Okay. It no, okay, can be. It can be. Okay. And it is not running because uh, of a problem or just it is a question of time? Okay, so it's running. For who, who, are, who are going through the installation process right now? Okay. Uh, so, I. So, my talk, yes. Yeah. All right. So yeah, you need to close the. Or you need to down the other network. Yes, you need to. Yeah, you need always so Docker <laughs> compose so down. It will all clash together because you're creating virtual machines all the time. So down the other machine, the well, the other containers that we use for the fresh exercises, and then. And for down you will for down you will need the same compose file you you use to um, start the network. So you have to go to the same place or point to the file and run the down command. So right now I have one container running after doing it. Okay, it's just not much. Not many, it's not should be a Okay, we'll take five minutes for yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so everyone can run. So So the, the question is, what is the difference between generating keys here and generating users in the um, yeah. We have a group also on um, public health but um, so Also, we have different admins for different tiers. 
But that's a yeah, completely different level of the same for you, the time to 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 So I hope now there are more people who put network one. Um, I mean, if, if you if you can't do if you can't run the comments now, you can, can you can do it later because we have everything here regarding this topic. So um, let's just list the accounts because we. One. So, and we have an address for our account. Now, the interesting thing is how to deploy a contract. The contract included in the zipper story is also a bit out of date, so you will need to update the contract. And we will have a look at. at a contract which will be similar to the transaction family we saw before. It is an uh, int key, so it has exactly the same functions like the transaction, processor, uh, transaction family we saw before. You can set and increase, decrease or get. So let's deploy this contract. First we need to compile it. So let's go to contracts. I will show you an easier, easier way of doing this later, um, how to get the bytecode. OK. So we have source. Oh, let's go in. So there we have the binary code of the contract, which we will need to, to uh, we will need use to deploy the contract. So we need to copy paste this very soon. Um, yeah. It's and this is the part where it feels like writing a celebrity contract in like late 2014, early 2015. Really, to do a few Yeah, at the moment. So. So just keep in mind, you will need to update this. You will need to replace this contract. OK, so that's how we create contract. Here is the binary code. You can see it. Yeah. So let's do it. Let's copy and paste. So, um, Elias, we want to explain something about something like gas used here or address. Yeah, so um, in, in what happens here? Um, so, in Ethereum, for those who don't know, um, you can have a private key that has a gas limit. It's basically it's a subcurrency of, uh, of Ether, and it is both um, a transaction fee, and it's used to limit the number of uh, number of steps, computational steps that can be done in a block. And this is because, uh, for example, if I have a loop that doesn't finish properly, then technically, in a system where you know, like in, in a kind of global VM, I would obviously block any further um, any further execution of functions. So gas is a way to limit that. There is a maximum number of gas in a block, and each transaction 
you write normal transactions when I say just ether that costs a certain number of steps. But then uh, each computational step has a certain gas cost attached to it. So storage is very expensive because it's supposed to be dissuaded. And you know, if I do one plus one, that's very cheap because it doesn't cost the uh, it does it's not computationally cheap, right? So instead, um, there is uh, the, the concept of gas, but obviously in a private network you, you don't really need this. Um, you don't really need transaction costs, so we don't want to have a cost for function execution. We don't have gas price, but we have gas liberty. Exactly. So, use gas. so gas price is the thing that sets where, where you set how much the gas that is being used in the transaction, how much you're going to pay for that, and you can incentivize minus the pick of the transaction. Here we only have gas liberty. So each, um, when you do a function call or when you create a contract in set, you still set the gas limit. But this is to avoid it never finishing. So you, it has a finite limit, and that means that even if you make a mistake, and you have a um, you have a endless loop. You're not going to do it that way. Yeah, gas. <laughs> you also watch me talk about gas in the videos in the course. Yes, we have. Uh... <laughs> We have a section about solidity, which we included now in this. <laughs> Shockingly younger. <laughs> okay, so, um, yeah, that, that means, I mean, you can see it here, contract is created. So now it's time to call this contract. And there are different ways to call it contract. We are going to do the um, a very low level um, call with Ethereum uh, GS ABI, so we need to start node. And then, I don't have it here. Then we are going to import this library. So we're just doing this to be able to do all of the encoding, because the uh, it's just an easy way. Like, the Ethereum JS, um, if you think JS gives us the easiest way to calculate all the things that we need to calculate in order to be able to call functions. I mean, if you run something like that, uh, then the data is um, not just the function name. It, it needs to be um, the the encoded call, the encoded um, function with the all the parameters. That's what we are going now to do. We are going to create this. Um, so, in the course, you can already find for set in um, and all and get and, and so on how how to create this uh, encoded. And we can already uh, save you a lot of time. This doesn't allow you to calculate the um, to calculate the hash of a function that does not have a parameter for some reason. Yeah. We've been trying to figure out why, but this is, an, uh, this is a problem in Ethereum JS itself. So, uh, if you have a getter function, you need to give it a. Even if it's if you, if you don't use it, you need to stupidly give it a um, a parameter. I will go through that in a moment. Okay, so um, let's try to set. And. So set needs a key um, in our contract. It's a bit different. It's a bit different from. It's a bit different from the transaction processor we saw before, because um, it doesn't want to have a string as a name. It wants to have an integer as key. So we are going to have two integers. We pass. Let's say, let's try the first one and give it you now 10. So. Of course, all in hex. <laughs> yeah, all in hex. So, um, and the other thing we are going to going to need is, uh, of course, we want to see, we want to see if it's really set. So, let's have what of terms. We can go. And call the contract. Um, 
contract call. Now first we need the address of the contract. That's something you can find here. Or you can also um, show, let you show with the, with the contract show, uh, account show. And now we need the data we want to call. Um, let's see what happens if we don't set. Got this. Doesn't work, so let's see what happens if we try to set. Oh, still something, <laughs> yeah, it isn't about that. Let's see in the cruise content do I we did this earlier. Right, it looks it looks fine. This one, uh, okay. Works. You didn't use uh, the LS. I didn't, yeah. In the content, yeah. Okay, so. You need to, you need to say which key, because the, at the moment, Seth doesn't differentiate between um, get call, like just read calls, or read, or call, which creates a, it's a state changing call, which issues a transaction. So you need to give um, the key that you're using because if you're calling a state-changing function in a solidity contract, a new transaction is created. So for that, you need that needs to be signed with your IP at the same. Now it works. So let's um, check if it's set. So for that, we have. Same contract, same account, we just need a different call. So, and there we can see it is um, set. So that's the, um, that's the painful way to call a contract. <laughs> now, um, there, there is also the RPC. Uh, which we didn't include here because it doesn't work very well. <laughs> but we can um, have a look at what it spots and maybe try one to call. So um, let's see. So we, we at some point just couldn't continue because the RPC wasn't working and we didn't really have the time to fix it uh, in the in the set code. So within probably the next week or two, or even if you just upgrade, uh, that should probably be solved very soon. But you're on the frontier. <laughs> so um, this set RPC is already running in one of the containers. So we can try this command, which works. So do I go here and see? And see here. Something. So, if you want to, if you want to do a call on the contract, um, actually, it doesn't work. But you can see um, the functions uh, or the calls they are supported on the set documentation, and the travel team is already also working with the with the set um, together to make it um, make it able to work with set and, and um, use Web3 and Truffle together. I think that's just a question of, um, of time. So basically that is how you can how you can use set. You can have a look at the command line interface again and maybe try on your own now just very quickly to deploy another contract because we have here other samples. Um, we have, for an example, the Hello World, which is very, pretty much very simple. Cool, so let's repeat the second steps to those that are working and we'll talk to the others. First, we deploy another contract. And um, there's also the uh, set contract show. Um, if, you want to, if you want to see the, the data that the contract has, you can use the set contract show and then the contract address to get, you know, to see the real interpretation of the um, of the chain data that sort of calls, but in the context of 
exact, so it shows you the, uh, the context things. So yeah, here we go. Has anyone managed to deploy a contract? Cool. <laughs> Who's still waiting for Okay. okay. By the, way, by the way, one thing I uh, didn't mention is if you look at the account, uh, if you show the account, just this is. Um, if you look at the account, you will see something like permissions. So that's not something that you can find in Ethereum. It's a different approach from Hypergy Bro, which is also now here. So you have different kinds of uh, permissions also. And you can see, you can see um, what the meaning of each permission is in the documentation. And I, I also expect this to be updated a lot more very soon because um, there are some calls which seem to exist, but they're not the implementation. And so, you know, this is this is very fresh. <laughs> So in the meantime, for those who are uh, who've already uh, done and gotten a um, gotten a contract going on Seth, um, or for those who are still waiting for the Seth, Seth installation, I just want to quickly go through uh, just a bit of Solidity intro, so that we can play around a little bit. Um, so let me just quickly do that, display. Actually, let me just, this is way too much already. Oh, there we go. Um, so uh, I'm just quickly going to walk through. Uh, first of all, for the contract development, I recommend the easiest way that you can do this right now is go to remax.ethereum.org. 
which is a browser-based Solidity editor that lets you also get out some of the encoding stuff and so on. So it's the easiest way to go. You can type along. Um, I'm also going to put this, the, the code that we're writing now, onto the learning platform so you can copy it in the third subsection uh, after we've done this. Don't peek yet. I want to ask you some questions. If you answer too quickly, I know that you've peeked. <laughs> Okay, so first of all, Solidity, it's a bit of a weird mix between like JavaScript and C with some added types. Uh, it's uh, Turing complete, it's, um, you know, it's kind of stateful. If you call a function, it either gets executed or not at all, so it's, um, it's atomic execution. And each, so it, on, on the VM, it's it's really like a way to see uh, to see a list of transactions. So it's an abstract representation of a list of transactions. It doesn't really exist anywhere. Like nowhere is the contract itself stored. But because you read the transactions themselves, you build the state and the st then the smart co the the contract, the solidity contract is just a, a way for you to interact with that. Um, so. Let's just quickly just build one. Um, so the whole thing, we're going to build a token, just, you know, because everyone's been doing that for the past year and a half and has collected millions and now everyone has to pay back the money. Um, so the convention is that the contract name is uppercase. Um, we are, so we're building this, we're basically building a simple token that works on, a, on an account basis. So what we're implementing is uh, a mapping from addresses to, uh, to numbers so that for each address we can keep a balance. So uh, the addresses uh, in Ceph are basically you know, what we did earlier with the PEM file, we're creating uh, these um, it's basically it's a key pair, and it allows us to allocate both, you know, the the currency in, on Ethereum. Or in this case, when I create a contract, it is the identity that I use to interact with that contract. So within a contract, I can both use the caller identity and other identities to allocate stuff, or I can do access control and stuff like that. So that for that, Solidity has a um, an address type. Um, has an address type, um, and that is address, conveniently. And we are creating a mapping. So I am mapping it, I'm mapping unsigned integers to the address because we're doing balances, and for now, we're just doing them uh, without the ability to have negative balance. So this is the name. Um, normally, if you want to, if you want to create a getter function, normally and probably soon in Seth, all you need to do is make it public. Uh, but at the moment, we have not made this work properly because we can't properly generate the, the uh, function hash. We'll get there, but you found it. Nice, cool. <laughs> so he solved it. We might just tie you on the spot. Um, but basically, you know, it'll, it, it will work. It is definitely possible. So this is kind of best practice. So we've got the balances. Um, now, what, what do we need to do first when we set up this contract? What, what do we need in order to be able to allocate tokens? We are going to need a constructor that allocates the tokens in the first place. So we create a constructor, and um, we then need to allocate this. So we are going to not balances, balances. And since this is a mapping, we are going to access the relevant position by accessing 
the account or the, the position of the sender of the message. In Solidity, all of the things that are connected to the transaction of that calls this function are accessible through message dot. So you've got message as sender, you've got message at value, and you know all of these things, timestamp, etc. So um, no, this block timestamp, but you can access all of those functions through the message dot. So in this case, we want the key identifier, the public key identifier uh, of the sender of this transaction, which in Seth terms means I'm using my Seth identity, uh, my sorted identity, to craft the transaction through the you know through using the Seth transaction family interface, which then uses the Seth key to sign. Um, the, the abstract representation of that transaction to call this function, which kind of thinks it's operating on, uh, on the theme network, I guess. So it's, it's a bit roundabout, but it's fun nonetheless. So we're just going to set this to 500,000. Um, <coughs> Because we're creating, so one of the interesting things obviously with the smart contracts initially was that I can create balance allocation and I can kind of create an artificial scarcity. So I'm just creating that scarcity here. There are 500,000 tokens. And if I don't build in any mechanism to add more tokens, I can't add more tokens. So that's it, right? Um, so that's what we have there. Oh yeah, of course. Um, To make this public as well. <coughs> so you might see older solidity contracts, like I think pre 4.2, where the constructor is a function that has the same name as the contract. But this is the um, this is the newest notation, or well, this is the, the most up to date notation. Right. So what else do we need? Um, for the token, what kind of what else do we need to build for it to make sense? Any ideas? I mean, right now it's really just one one person having five hundred. Hmm? So a send a send trans, a transaction mechanism, right? So uh, we are going to build a function, and it's going to call d to be called send token. Now, we want the amount, and we want who gets it. So we're using address. Now, actually, a, a quick one on the, on the accessing here. Um, what in traditional mapping, like if you, if you do a mapping or if you do an array um, in, in other languages, what would be the problem of this? Constructor, if nothing else has happened before. Sorry? <laughs> exactly. So, usually you obviously have the problem that if you haven't initialized it, it doesn't exist. But in Solidity contracts, all of the storage for that contract is already allocated entirely and zeroed out. So, everything exists and it's zero. Mm, which means that. If I access this, it's zero. Which is also important to realize that if you are using an, uh, an, a variable that you haven't allocated or haven't set or haven't initialized properly, then you might just send currency or tokens to the address zero, which means it's lost forever. If you can actually, if you, if you want to have a laugh, you can go onto the Ethereum block explorer and you can look at the 0x0 zero, zero zero address and it has a bunch of ether in it. This happens all the time. And then it's gone, no one has the key for that. So if you want to burn a lot of ether, you can just send it to 0. Okay, so um, I'm going to do the recipient here. Now in this function, what do we do? Yeah, of course, sorry, I know this is very obvious, but uh, it's also the afternoon, so I'm just 
trying to <laughs> trying to keep it alive. Um, so we do the same thing. Uh, and we first decrease. first decrease by amount, um, and then we increase recipient. We increase by uh, amount. So um, usually it's best practice to first reduce and then increase because depending on what you're doing, um, there, there, are, there is a possibility that uh, you can build what is called a re-entrancy vulnerability into your contract, which means if you are calling, so these contracts live as objects in the, uh, in the address space of Seth, which means that they're universally accessible throughout the network. This is the same for Ethereum. Now, I can call the function, if I know how a contract looks like and I have the interface to operate, uh, to connect to it and deal with it, I can call from this contract, I can call another contract and call a function in that contract. I can also send, uh, you know, if I, I can craft a transaction in the function and I can execute that. Now, if I'm, de if I'm interacting with another contract and that contract is malicious, it is possible that, is, that um, you create what is called a re-entrancy bug, where the contract on the other end will call back the function that you just executed at that point, and it will go back to the point that it jumps into the contract, so you, you keep looping around, and then you execute the last bit at the end, so you, you come out at the end. And obviously, this will go as long as there is gas. So it is possible that if you do this the wrong way and you're dealing with, a, you know, with an unknown contract or you know, this kind of a dynamic situation, it might be that you keep looping around and you think you're updating the right things, but you don't. So this is usually why you just assume maybe something goes wrong. I'm just going to decrease fast because of before I'm going to create. But usually, like this is not going to be a problem in this case because we're not dealing with external function calls or transaction sendings, but um, it's just something to keep in mind. In this case, obviously, the function is, is going to be executed completely or not at all. Right, um, and then because until I speak to you down there and we figure out how to uh, encode the balances function. We're just going to quickly create a getter function as well, um, just because it's easier. And I'm going to give it a thing here. Mm. So we want to tell it. So this is a public function. It is static. And it returns a uint, and then we just return the balances user. Cool. So um, I would say there is uh, there is this contract in, um, in the learning material. So in the Solidity example section, you can find it, you can copy it there. Um, what I would like you to do is, first of all, make this work, de deploy this to Seth, interact with it, um, so call a function, and then um, adapt it so that, and there are two tasks at the, uh, at the end in the section, so um, allow for it to have negative balances, Whoop. And, and complete it. So the, the exercises are in the learning material. Let's just take 10, 15 minutes to try it out. Are you still compiling? Still compiling. Okay, you're not compiling. Hmm? Still compiling. Oh, still compiling. Okay. And otherwise, if you're still compiling, you can go into Remix and kind of just play around with the contract a little bit, uh, see what comes out.
Oh, this needs to be public as well. So Seth at the moment only supports uh, Solidity compiler version 0 0.5 and later. Um, on Remix, uh, the, if you click on, so once you have something that compiles uh, with a 0. Point, uh, you know, like 0. 0.5 or up, you can see details here. So Anul showed you how to do the Solsi compiling into bytecode. You can also use the object in the bytecode JSON here which is the same thing. So this is a web interface that uses Solsi to generate this. And this is basically, um, this is the, the smart contract that you deploy in Seth.
You can you can just play um it's <clears throat> yes. Success, the 
You had this problem earlier as well. So it's it's a it looks right, it's an email So there's a second here. And I'm not going to be Thank you. 
Ah. Can you add view? So uh, can you do this? Can you try this? Thank you. 